Are we winning the fight against climate change? If you had asked me this question 10 years ago, or maybe even if you'd asked me this question one year ago, my answer would have been a resounding lol no. But if you asked me that question right now today, my answer would still be no, but with a resounding I don't in front of it. It all comes down to a little number, and that number is 2.1 degrees Celsius. I want to explain what this number means, why it's so exciting, but also why we shouldn't be celebrating just yet. The fundamental question of climate science is how hot will the world get? I made a video all about this, looking at how we work out how sensitive the atmosphere is to carbon dioxide. But at the end of this video, I said this. Well, the truth is that we can only answer this question together by deciding how hard we're gonna fight against climate change. Okay, but how hard are we working to fight climate change? Well, we can crunch the numbers based on what countries have said they want to do to combat the problem and how much we'd expect the world to warm in response. When I say we, I actually had nothing to do with it. It was all this organization called Climate Action Tracker. But when Climate Action Tracker do this, they come up with a number of 2.1 degrees Celsius of global warming. This number might look pretty mundane, but I honestly feel like it's the best piece of news I've got in 2020. Although, let's be honest, there hasn't been that much competition. Limiting global warming to 2 degrees Celsius is the target of the Paris Climate Agreement, albeit the less ambitious target. But at the time that the Paris Agreement was reached, people were saying that this target was unrealistic or completely unattainable. And honestly, I can see why. Because at the time, it looked like we were tracking along the worst case scenario, which would have taken us to around 4 degrees Celsius of global warming. The difference between 4 degrees Celsius and 2.1 degrees Celsius of global warming might not sound like too much, but every degree changes the planet. Just think about the last ice age. That was only 4 degrees Celsius colder than the last century. And every degree of warming affects people. It makes extreme weather events more likely. It makes water scarcity more severe. It makes it harder to grow enough food and wider parts of the planet unlivable. Put another way, every degree Celsius that we can avoid will save people's livelihoods, will save people's lives. So limiting global warming to 2.1 degrees Celsius would be an incredible achievement compared to the previous path that we were on as a planet. And I would love to end the video right there, but unfortunately there are two very big buts, which in this context I hate, and I cannot lie. The first but is that this scenario is seriously optimistic. I mean, optimistic is actually in the name of the scenario. It shows how much the world will warm if every country in the world which has said it wants to achieve net zero emissions does actually achieve net zero emissions. But we know that that might not happen. Take the United States, for example, which is the world's biggest historic emitter. Yes, President-elect Joe Biden has said he wants to put the US on a path towards net zero, but it's uncertain what he'll actually politically be able to achieve. Plus, who knows what will happen after his four years of presidency are over. But never mind the United States, what about the United Kingdom? The UK has a net zero target written into law, which is great. But the UK isn't actually on track for achieving this net zero target on time which is not great, Britain. If you actually look at countries' climate policies rather than just taking their wishful thinking at face value, then we're on track for more like three degrees Celsius of global warming. But even if you are feeling optimistic, there's still a reason to save the champagne. You see, 2.1 degrees Celsius is, like Leonardo DiCaprio, still far too hot. And to be clear, this isn't my opinion. I don't actually think that a climate scientist can, by themselves, dictate what a safe level of global warming for the world should be. But the reality is that once America rejoins, every single country in the world 
will be signed up to the Paris Climate Agreement, and the Paris Climate Agreement aims to limit global warming well below 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels and to pursue efforts to limit the temperature increase even further to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Now, you don't have to be a mathematician to know that 2.1 degrees Celsius is not well below 2 degrees Celsius, never mind 1.5 degrees. The difference between this 1.5 degrees Celsius target and this 2.1 degree prediction will have severe consequences around the world, for example increasing extreme weather events, but it will also risk wiping out coral reefs as well as low-lying island nations. So this announcement is optimistic and it's not good enough, but it's still incredibly good news. It's amazing how far we have managed to lower the thermometer of our projections for the future in just a few years. And this is thanks to everyone who has pushed for climate action, whether they've done that through politics, through protest, or just through talking to other people. In other words, it's thanks to people like you watching this video. It shows what we can achieve when we fight for the world to take climate change seriously. And if we can keep that up, maybe we can lower that projection even further. And perhaps we can begin to turn that optimism into a reality. To find out how scientists find out how hot the world will get in the future, check out my recent video over here. And if you're new around here, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss all my future videos. Okay, until next time. Bye.